Okay. Um, Everybody. So today knew. I'm broadcasting from outdoors. <laughs> uh, uh, more, more thanks to my uh, uh, my not knowing the area more so than anything else. So I got a little bit lost on the way. So hence I just stopped on a park bench. I realized the time. So my apologies. So we're so over the last couple of days, I'm sure hopefully everybody's everybody's doing enough filming their own. But in case you haven't, let me give you a quick, quick summary. So we had. Um, so we had started talking about a new, a new parrot, a uh, question of if you happen to have been placed outside of the club, meaning you, normally you only have, you have 2,000 amateur around where you resided, and that is your allowed area for, uh, that is your allowed area for, uh, for Shabbos or Yom Tov, you get, you have your club. So the question is, what happens when you, when you have left your club? All right, when you've left your designated area, you're supposed to be after Shabbat or Yom Tov, and you get placed outside of it, what happens? So the default is that if, you, if you're moved, you end up getting only the, the four Amot surrounding where you have to be at that moment, and that's it. So we started discussing cases of where you might get more, such as the case of a boat, or the case of where non-Jews had forcibly removed you and brought you some other place. We, then we started discussing uh, questions if you went there intentionally or unintentionally. Um, and... So, and now we're talking, so the last thing we we're talking about the case of the boat, there was a machloka between uh, Ribi, uh, between Rangam Leal and Rio uh, versus, every, versus, versus everybody else. In fact, there was a story where they were all in the boat together and Rangam Leal walked the whole boat, whereas everybody else simply stayed in their location. So then the question was, did they, the mission also mentioned, did they really um, hold, hold of that or were they simply being mothmere? And it seems, and then, so it appears that they were being mothmere, not necessarily that they nece that is necessarily was, they were so convinced by that being the case. Um, so now we are continuing. And, and then we got to a case of where, it's a, where, a, where somebody is residing in a big ah, uh, meaning they're in a valley. And the question is, then what, what is the case in that circumstance? So I apologize if everybody can't see can't see me. Just um, when you're on when you're on mobile, you can either choose to I can either looking at the Gemara or I can be looking at you. So unfortunately, I can't do it at the same time. So please, if I don't see your hand being raised, just shout it out, and then I'll be able to answer your questions. Okay. So we so the last so the last couple lines on um and that I'm a vet. Or is there my time with Omar Karaba? So the question is, why did Rabbi Zera not agree with the, the opinion of Rabba, who is saying that in regards to the boat, that it considers to be valid walls? So why would you say, why do you disagree and say that you might allow for walls when a non Jew built them around you when you're in a valley, but you wouldn't count walls for the boat? So I'm going to call him a of Rich, mine was the difference there that when you made the, when the, when the non Jews made the walls in the valley, they did because they wanted to make walls. But in this case, not they wanted to make walls, rather they wanted to basically, in order to float, you need walls. So not they really wanted there to be walls, just like in order to float into the walls, that's what happened. So it's more of an accidental instance, and therefore the walls, you could say the case is different between the case of a boat versus the case of we're in the valley and, and non-Jews suddenly built, a, build, build walls around you. Rabbi, my time with Omar Kirby Zera, from Halefet. So why does Rabbi not agree with the in the case of a boat that's moving? So, so Kuliyama, Lopaligi, keep Ligi Bisham there. You're right, everybody agrees that when the boat's moving, that you have no choice. And therefore, you should be, and therefore you shouldn't have to be stuck to your dalama because basically, as the boat keeps moving, it's completely impossible for you actually to be in the correct location uh, in, in your dalama because your dalama motor constantly moving as the boat moves. So since there's no way for you to be in the right place, anyways, so therefore we'll let you. Um, therefore, we'll we'll let you um, uh, get the whole boat because because. Otherwise, you're, otherwise you're, you're entire, you're, you, you'd be, every moment you'd be in a violation and that's not, that's not possible because it's against your will. So we don't say that. Okay, so let me see if I, let's, let me know if this, I'm going to try, I'm going to try and share a diagram, please let me know if this works. Um, okay. I'm sharing my screen now. So... Uh, never mind, that's not quite working. Okay. Uh, never mind, that didn't work. Okay. 
My apologies. Is there a way for? No, nope, looks like it's not letting me do it. Never mind. Okay, I tried. Um, so basically, so as you guys are on a boat, let's say you had your 2,000 arm out. Um, so you'd see that basically as you as the boat's moving, wherever the tchum had been, it's a moving target. You're, you're a moving target versus the boat to the tchum. So wherever your tchum had been, you will constantly be moving beyond where your previous thought on what were, and that would create a problem. But if you're stationary, that's when it come, that's what comes into effect because it's, in, it's as if the, let's say if you were to drop anchor in the middle in the, out in the middle of the ocean, because the tchum had been moving, but now you're finally stationary. So. Okay, so now, now, now we've established the case. Um, and so now that we've dealt with, with that in regards to moving or not, so Amr of Nakma, or Yitzhak, Mani did Nami Deka. So that actually, the Rakhon says, you could have put this up in the mission itself. The Mahalak said, low pligi. That they're not, that they wouldn't argue about, about, about when it's moving. Well, I mean, my Militani Maase, Shabbat, we pound the Rasidin, we fligi, we natam, bayam. So the question is, what was this case in the Mishnah? We said that uh, where we had Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Zarya walking the whole thing, where Rabbi Shur and Rabbi Kiv didn't move. So, Iyamar, Rabbi Shalom, Rabbi Lazar, Lo Pligi, Hanu Dittani, Ratsu, Dilma, Amda. So, it's a, what's the case about where it's moving? Because if, if not, they wouldn't have been arguing, and that's, and that's why. Um, so why do they keep to the Dalit Amot as opposed to, you know, not moving at all, which is what you really should have been doing if you were really afraid. Rather, they were just worried that any moment it would stop. So therefore, because they were afraid it would stop at any moment, therefore they treated it at, at, cold, at, cold times, at all times as if it had stopped moving. But not that they actually thought that it had stopped moving. Uh, um, hopefully that's clear, because basically they were being they were being mothmer on the chance that it might move, not because at the moment there's any, any actual problem. So, and if you want to say that you, they, they really argue about kids of you should have said the word the mission shouldn't use is they're clear, right? They should have said, um, they, they wouldn't have, you wouldn't, they wouldn't have said Ratzel because because it's not Ratzel Hathwir, you think it's actually Usser. It it so, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't say Lahathwir, you'd have said that they think it's Usser. The fact they said that, that, they, that it was Lahathwir means they don't think, they don't really think that it was Usser. So, Rabaji says you lose out the mission as well. Diktani Seifa, Dumya the Dereva Sohar. So Rabaji says you can infer this mission itself based on the latter, a latter half of the of the Mishnah, referring to um the um because the host starts talking about a boat. So we're also saying the boat is compared to the case of the pen of the stable where the non-Jews forcibly dropped you off there. So Ma Dirva Sohar Dikvi Afina Namik Dikviya, just like the pen of the stable walls will Will, will be established here a place of residence. So too, the boat, which is moving against your will, will also establish a place of residence. So, Amr Lai Ravaka, Bray Dharava, Dharavashi. So then, Ravaka, son of Rava, told Ravashi, Hilgatakum Gamliel, the Sina, the Hilgata, Mikwal, the Pligi. So, Ravaka, the son of Rava, told Ravashi that the Halakha called the Gamliel by boat. And if, but if we're saying that, that would imply that in general, there is a argument about a boat, not that we always agree with it. So, so Ian, this really. So yes, that's that's the case, right? They do they do disagree. So, Hatanya, but is this really the case? Then we learn another bright to that Hananya. Omer kol to hayom yashu adano b'dvar halacha emes yisraeli abba halacha kamliel b'sina halacha rikiva b'dir soar. You're right. That's 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 true. But he's really learned in the bright that all that has been all that while all these Tanahim were on the boat. They were uh, discussing what should be, and that evening, so Rav, Rav, Rav Ashi, um, um, who is the nephew of uh, of Rav Yeshua, said they decided to pass in that all of the other pass with the local Rav Gamliel in regards to a a spin on a moving boat, you can walk with the whole thing. They also concluded that the local Rav Yekiv in regards to a case where where non where non Jews removed you, place you into Penner Stable, you only get. Um, and the same would apply to case your boat is not moving. Okay. So now Rav Hananya asks a question. Yesh, uh, again, this is also relating to a boat. Yesh um, or angel So do you have a tzum when you're above ten amot, or only when you're below ten amot? 
right? So, so is it, does it apply above 10 amos or not? Well, a lot of times when you're on a boat, you could very well be where you're above 10 amos. So now we're, now, now we're uh, clarifying with other cases. So amot gavoh asar of rachav arba, lo tibay lach, the ara smech lehi. So you can't really argue based, like, bring a proof based on what we mentioned before about the about, about, low, about low posts, about there being posts in Rishat Aravim. That is 10, so I'm told it's to be its own separate Rishas. So we say that's not considered to be a valid case at all. Uh, because that post is, is relying, is, 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 is resting on the ground, and that's what create, and that would create a problem in this case. So, Kiji Bailok Amuk Vosara, the Inorok of Arba, you know what it calls the Kisha. The rest that's not a case because that post is considered, is Dalad Amut, is Dalad Amut inside, is considered to be its own separate shus, and therefore, that's why um, you, shouldn't, you wouldn't have to worry about um, about going to the same degree because that could be your place of residence. The question is, what if we, if you're on a on a post that is less than four by four, so therefore, it's considered to be a Makam Tour, it's considered to be a place where you are technically exempt. Um, from, uh, for, it's not quite Rishat Rabbim, it's not quite Rishat Yachit, it's considered to be a place of exemption. What then? Um, so, and then we say, so that, that could be the question. Inami, or the case could possibly be where if you decide to, if you wanted to try and walk between the various posts by jumping. So therefore you're never actually dropping below 10, uh, 10 swag the whole time, and therefore you're never actually in an area where you would be Consider something such some, and therefore you'd be fine. So, right, so that's why they had to be taught, and that's where the case comes out. So, listen, Afrina, another version of the Pierce Lemma is Bisfina Mai. So, the case in regards to a boat, right? Because when a boat is, is, is sailing over the water, so, right, so is, so do we consider the boat to be a separate area because the boat itself is 10, let's say, if the, the where you are in the boat is ten above the water, or is it that you're ten above the above the the, the, the seabed or the or the riverbed? So how does that work, right? How does Tzumim work with boats? So I'm going to Hoshaya Tashma. So Hoshaya comes up and let's let's try and figure this out. So Ma'ase Jabo mit Pondar Sin the Fliga B'Sinatam B'Yam B'Kule. So he quotes the story we quoted earlier about the four Tanaim on the boat and how some of them moved around and some of them did not move around. So Iyamar Pishal Ma Yesh Tzumim Mishum Haki Ratsu. If you want to say that that if you say Tzchumen doesn't apply, if you say, if you say Tzchumen applies, that makes a lot of sense why they want to be mocked by themselves. Ela'i'amar in Tzchumen amairatu. But if you want to say there's no such thing as a Tzchum above 10 Tzchum above the ground, and when the boat is presumably 10 Tzchum above the water level or above the seabed, then why would you say they want to be mocked for you? Like, is it, what's the, what, are the, what are they mocked for then? So, could Amaraba, rather, it's, or, it's, or, it's according to the, the case of you as Rava states, Malaka Barakash. Basically, when they're moving through shallow, swampy water, therefore, they're always within 10 handbreadths of the seabed, and therefore, swimming would, 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 would apply. Hakanami, but not Therefore, in our case also, we must be talking about a case of swampy water, which, is, which has a very shallow bottom, and that's why you're always within 10 talk about the actual ground. So, so, then, so that would imply that there is an issue of swim, and it's a look at based on the story we had in the mission of prior. No, it's a touch one. Everybody trying to figure this out is another proof. Also, a story that may sound that may sound familiar. Pam Akad Lanilu Sulamamal Acha Kasheta the Zerim Gamliel looked out and he determined that oh we're actually within the scope. Right. So one time they were on a boat on our Shabbos and then they and then they end up only arriving after Shabbos. So Gamliel said that you're allowed to disembark because we're within the scope before Shabbos. So Yemar Bishlama Yeshlamin Shapir. If we say that there is such a thing as scope when you're on the water, this makes a lot of sense. Because otherwise, because if otherwise, then Rabbi Galil's statement of, oh, yeah, I checked, and we're within the tzum, means nothing. Because who cares whether you're in the tzum or not if there's no tzum while you're on a boat? So what is it? So, so, so what is it? So, Abba Rabba, so Rabba has his, has, his, has, his, has his solution. Rather, with the case, it's where they're going through shallow, swampy water. And that's why, and, and that's also why it was relevant even for the case of uh, w when they were coming in after dark. Okay, so we're gonna try try again because again we still haven't just concluded how what, how the argument goes. So Tashma Hani Shav Shmaitata. 
These were the seven seven teachings that were said uh, before Chesed Sura. Um, so these seven things were, were uh, stated in front of Chesed and Sura and they're repeated at the end of that Shabbos before Rav Mavadita, even though the distance is too far between uh, between the two. So the question is, how could they have had this, this circumstance happen? So. Right, so basically there's certain there's seven teachings are taught in Surah, and then they were also repeated at the, at the beginning of Shabbos and in the Shabbat morning, and then they're repeated in Sukhumadita at the end of Shabbos. These are two cities in Babel, Sukhumadita, the two two of the greatest two of the greatest Torah centers. Um, and so and they're saying that, that somehow they, they managed to have a they both managed to have the same halakha taught in the same places, despite the fact that they were very far apart. So Man, I'm who's, the, who's the one who says this? Love Elio, Elio. Um, I'm Renu. Who's the one who's going to talk about the love of both places? Rather, must have been Elio Navi. Alma, Inch, this woman, the Mala Messara. Lo, Jumi Yosef, Shida, I'm Renu. No, so the answer is, is that no, one option, it, so one option is that Elio Navi could have done it because basically he could have uh, um, magically, um, either he could, have, he, could have, he could have flown there or leapt there um, miraculously. So that's how he could have done the trick. Or, it, the, like, and then therefore that would imply that there is such a thing as Tzulman over 10, ten Tzvachim because Elanavi of course wouldn't violate Shabbos. Uh, I'll do him uh, no, he's a Yosef Shida, I mean, it's Yosef the demon. So, let me see if, if, if any, if this, uh, let me check if there's any, any commentary explaining who Yosef the demon is. Um, one moment. Um, No, nope. okay, so I'm not sure that Yosef Mashida is an actual person or it, or, or if he's an actual demon. But either way, he's, he's somebody who's not observing Shabbos, um, and that's how I managed to get from place to place. Um, again, whether he's refer, whether he's an actual demon or was simply a person who was viewed as a demon due to his due to his uh, actions is um, I will I'll hopefully I will hopefully I will hopefully find the answer soon. But as of now, I don't know. Okay, so Tashma Harini Nazir. Uh, um, so, so now we're going to try and see how the case goes in regards to, um, uh, again, have we been able to determine how the, how the term works, which way do we do it? So again, we're still trying to figure this out. Uh, so let's, let's, so let's, let's keep going. So, so, so somebody at word has sworn that they are a that they are a nazir. They they swear up all, um, all, all all full wine and going to uh, and becoming and becoming tame. Then they are allowed to drink wine on Shabbos and Yom Tov, but they can't have wine during the rest of the week. So now we're going to try to figure out why is that. So if you say that there's not, that, that there's an issue of flying. Um, sorry, if you're above 10 12, then that there's a problem. That explains why on Shabbat you're allowed, you're allowed to drink wine because on those days, uh, Eliyahu Nabi can't come because he wouldn't violate Shabbos or Yom Tov in order to get there. But if you say there's other things in those cases, then um, on above 10 12, and we know, and we know that Eliyahu Nabi can do miraculous things such as, such as flying. So then how would you say that then why are you let to eat, uh, uh, drink wine on the Shabbos Yom Tov? So Shaniyat, um, no, this different case of Eliyahu Navi, and in terms of when he's, when he's going to come, when Mashiach is going to come. The Amar Kra Hine Anoke Shleil Lachem Et Yom Navi, the Halo Atz Eliyahu Me'atzvah, because as the pasuk says, and Malachi says, "Behold, I'm sending to you Elijah the prophet. I, I am a God of Aron on the on the on the great dreadful day." So, what, so this means that, uh, that it's, the, since this prophecy is talking about um, Eliyahu coming the day before the coming of Mashiach, therefore, Mashiach did not come the day, but the, um, on the day on the day prior. So, whether or not, um, so which would mean that even though we don't necessarily know about Mashiach, whether it's or not, whatever sure Eliyahu did it, and therefore we know that since you haven't heard of it yet, and Eliyahu has not come yet, so therefore you you'd still you would not you would still be allowed to have your wine on Shabbat and Yom Tov if you had made such a swear. 
of course, you should not make such a swear, and that's why. And if you accidentally did, you should immediately be, try and be much your neder, as we, as many of us hopefully did on Erev Rosh Hashanah. If not, hopefully, everyone will have a chance to do so uh, prior to Yom Kippur, because that would definitely not be a fun way to spend, because you would not want to put yourself in a situation where you are are truly having sworn off of of, um, of something, because um, it's considered to be, at least in this case, because it's very more, and it'll make it very difficult for you to say Kiddush um, moving forward. Okay, so so we have to eat. If that was the case, but all call Yom Yom and Nami Lishtera to Halo Atel Yahu Matzmo. So that's the case, right? So if you're saying that the day of the Mishael comes, and every day you could argue that, well, that since since I haven't heard of, of since Mishael's not here today, that means that Eliyahu didn't come yesterday, and therefore I can I can I, I can drink wine today. Um, Ella Amrinan. Ella Amrinan lebeti nagadol ata hachanam ata nahachanami lema lebeti nagadol ata. No, so that's not really valid because because Eliyahu Navi can't be everywhere at once. He is not God. He's a he's a human being, despite many of the miraculous things he can do. Therefore, you could say maybe he truly showed up only managed and he only managed yesterday to arrive in Beit Nagadol, place the Sanhedrin is, and therefore they know, but no one else knows. So now, and therefore, it could you could lead the circumstance of. Uh, yeah, I know you already have arrived, despite you're not ha- having no knowledge of said occurrence. So, in court, moves up, land the Israel, Shinayo, Ba, Loba, Rishabata, Loba, Rishim, Tov, and Menea, Torah. No, but even so, we know that the, the reason, the actual reason why, why you're still allowed to have wine on Shabbat Yom Tov is because we have a, we have a Messiah to the Jews that Eliyahu Navi will not call an Arab Shabbos or an Arab Yom Tov because people don't have time to go out and greet him because they're too busy preparing for Yom Tov. So maybe you think that because Eliyahu has not come Erev Shabbat because of the trouble that Mashiach can't come on Erev Shabbos. Um, so this, so if you should be allowed, Eliyahu lo ati Mashiach ati. No, even though Eliyahu didn't come, Mashiach could still arrive. He came to ati Mashiach hakol avadim hein liyisrael. And and the and the reason why we say Mashiach could come on Erev Shabbos is because once Mashiach comes, all non-Jews will be subservient to the Jews, um, and therefore. Um, that will, um, and therefore you don't have to do work preparing for Shabbos because the Nadjus will very willingly do it for you. So whether that means literally they will they will be subservient, or simply that they will, having recognized the greatness of God due to the um, the manifestation of God in this world through Eliyahu and Navi, so that'd be subject to debate. Um, and personally, I'd be more inclined to being the, due to their recognizing of God than them actually being our definitive slaves, because that would be a very strange turn of events that would also lead to um yeah okay we'll, we'll leave up the theological questions uh for a later date um but so but either way again so it's possible it's, po- it's possible for Mashiach to come on our on, on our Shabbos Eliyahu could not because this whole thing is according to the opinion that Eliyahu and Mashiach are the same person um for more opinions on on how that works out um there are, that is a type of another time. There's major opinions as to how many, in terms of the eschaton, in terms of, meaning the end of days and the arrival of Mashiach. The question is of how people are involved. The numbers range from one to two to four, to even more than that. Um, again, for more on that, uh, people are interested, please let me know. And I'll be looking to share on it uh, at another time. But for now, we will, um, or this is according to the opinion that there is. Um, that Eliyahu, there, that there's two people involved, involved in the um, Emot Mashiach, in the you know, Days of Salvation, where Mashiach comes. There's Eliyahu Navi, who's the herald. And then there's Mashiach um, Ben David, and those are the two people we're referring to, and that's it. Again, there are, there are more, again, yeah, there are many other uh, opinions as to how that works, but that's what we have for now. Okay? Um, again, please, if anybody, if anything's unclear, please chime in. Um, I'll not be able to see you, so please um, um, simply say it out loud. So now, based on this whole concept of of of, of Mashiach or Yalanovi not coming on Shabbos, so we say Bechai B'Shava Lishtere Liv Shav Minad. So then we should have also been allowed to drink a drink wine then on Sunday. Leave Shut Me Nah to Ancient Swimmin. And therefore you would have known that there's nothing as swimming on um above ten slots. 
The EEH come in, but God is the list here, eh? No, I'll see how it. And I mean, every single Sunday, you're allowed to. Um, you're allowed. You're allowed to drink wine because you know that on because on Shabbos, Eliyahu Navi didn't show up. So what must the case be in regards to the to the, the to the Tana teaching us about about Eliyahu Navi and Mashiach's arrival? Hi Tana, it's Luke Misafkale. He is coming. He ain't coming. Oluch Oluch Rather, what you say is that the Tana is certain about the probation of coming above ten Tvachim, um, whether it applies or not on Shabbos. And therefore, he ruled strictly in regards to Sunday that you're not allowed to have. Um, that you're not allowed to have uh, have wine on Sundays because he wasn't because he wasn't sure about the case of Tzumin, and that's why um, and that's why the only day that's listed when you're when you're allowed to um, drink wine when you've made such a swear is on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Okay, the guy. Um, Ema the Kanadar. Wait. So what the question is when. So when did the person have this, make this swear? So Elam is a kai b'chol, Kim the Kale and Iziru and Heiki Asha Shabda Malkile. So now we've got another question. This is based on the general rules of of of, 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 of making of making swears as well as making uh, not, um, Nazarite oaths, right? So again, Masechet Bazir or Masechet uh, Shuot, um, or Masechet Darim. So those three Masechet deal deal with that. Um, um, don't hope not to give them any nightmares if they didn't let those in the south though uh, um, uh, were difficult. But again, that's what, that's what we're talking about now. So, so the, the question is, how could that have worked? How could again? How could you have a a a, a, a vow that went into effect then then suddenly doesn't work on certain days of the week? How is that possible? Ella the Kai Vishabta. Rather, it must be that he made the vow this vow on Shabbos, the Kanada or Bayom Tov. So rather, must we be? We're only talking about the case. Basically, you decided to somebody decided to become a nazir on or to swear uh, and swear off wine, and they decided to do this on Shabbat Yom Tov, and that's when it occurred, and that's when the case is talking about is where you would just you would just made that swear, but if you'd done so at a different time, that would not have been the case. Again, this only is working. So this only goes into effect because you said so, but if you had not. Uh, then this would not have worked out. Okay. All right. So what we do, what we dealt with there was the case of women above above ten. So uh, then, then a whole bunch of test cases as to whether or not the story would 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 teach us about does is there women above ten so often or not based on the case of the boat based on the case of Elio and Navi. Then we discussed questions when Elio and Navi when my mission can come and how that relates to your swear. And then we finally, once we discussed that, then we realized that actually a lot of our discussion had, we, we missed the point. The question is, how could you have a swear that goes into effect? And later it comes, it goes out of being in effect. So now we finally have resolved our, our issue. And now we finally understand what, where precisely we are at. Okay. Um, everything clear before I start the next section? Or do we have any questions on what we've done so far? Okay, I'll take that as a um, every everybody 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 followed. All right, okay. Um, again, again, chime in if you if if you need if, if I miss anything because I will not be able to to see um, anybody raising their hands just due to the logistics of it. Um, so, Paman Achat on Nitzel and Nabal, right? So now we're right to the case of where they're on a boat and they get in only after, and then they only arrive at, at the shipyard after dark. And now the question is, are you allowed to get, get they want to know they're allowed to get off the boat. They turn to Gamliel and say, are we allowed to get off? And he says, yes, because we've actually already entered the the Tzlum before it got dark. I was checking. So, therefore, and therefore you can rely on that. So, so Tana, Lindina, Brighta. Um so far at high to low from Leal, high am up um may beat with sofa about Pai Mama Vyabasha U Kanegda of Pai and Biam. So how did he so how did he manage to figure this out? So the writer says that we're gonna land a special tube so Richie could look and see a and see this two thousand uh Amod of land and also it would also be accurate for him to determine two thousand Amod at sea. So basically he had some sort of early um uh, telescoping device uh, again, perhaps actually it worked. Um, that's subject to um, to debate because, but 
Um, just simply because we're not entirely sure. Uh, it, there's, we don't have any, any concrete evidence as to the use of the magnification devices in that time period. Mostly the magnification devices they had were consisted of um, water in a, in, in a flask, which give you two times magnification. How that would be precise enough for this, it's not clear. Other options you could have done based off of the star chart or, or angle of the sun. Um, as we will, um, as we will hopefully see, um, as we'll hopefully see, see in a bit. Again, as far as the uh, te te uh, the technical what the, um, the device is, I'm not sure historically we are so we are so certain. If somebody happens to know more about that, please let me know. Um, I simply am not entirely certain myself. So Harosa Leda Kama Omko Shell Guy. So now we're talking about the ways of measuring distance. I, um, so what 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 would he do? Um, maybe show ferret or maybe ba the other comma um shall guy. You can bring a similar tube, and then by looking at it, you'll know the depth of a, a valley as well. Um, again, how do these work? It, it most likely is done based off of the angle of the sun. But but again, this is everything I'm saying is based on largely based on guesswork that I have heard from uh, based again based on archaeologists who are trying to figure out how the people in the ancient world managed to create so precise. Um, measurements and and, and and holes and tunnels, despite the fact that they don't, they never, they didn't really have, um, you know, modern technology. For instance, if anybody remembers when they're digging a uh, when they're digging a a pass or a mountain for the, um, I believe in the case of so in Israel for the new train line, so they were trying to um, so use the, they they brought in a specimen from Germany, and they had you know and they and they managed to be off by several feet. They, they drilled from both sides of the mountain, and they just completely missed. Even the, and with then you know set them back several months and millions of million, mil, um, million, many millions of dollars. Exact figures just escape my mind a little bit. But on the other hand, we have let's say maybe here has been to the scale tunnels where they managed to do it um, over the span of a couple of months using just just you know chisels and managed to you know get you know less than less than. Uh, you know, and they managed to hit pretty much spot on, less than a meter. And they, again, also the same as having two ends. So again, we don't fully understand the technology of how the mechanics of it work. But again, so we'll, we'll, we'll do it based on, it's based on the, uh, based on the angles of the sun. And that's what we're talking about here. But again, precisely how the magic got it so accurate, we are not entirely sure. Because till this day, we are, um, we've unable to replicate this device that they have. Uh, again, for more on this, I know the devices are similar to it. There's also, um, um, People are interested again please let me know and i'll try to give a share on it um, um you know technology you know as it relates to you know jewish history at very at various time periods and how that affects or doesn't affect halakha um or for case where it came up but um let's leave it at that um that tangent was a little bit too long my apologies okay so so similarly um so we talk about the, the death based on the tube. So how roughly that comma go whole shall deck out. You know how tall a palm tree is. Rojik komato vestelo vestelo komato. We add that comma go whole shall deck out. So if you want to know the height of a palm tree, but you don't want to actually climb the tree to measure it, basically you can measure your own height, and then and then measure the relative length of your own shadow, and then and then 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 measure the height of the palm tree, and therefore proportionally you'll know the height of the palm tree. Okay, so then once we are and now after having discussed measurements, we get to a uh, um, um, okay, sorry, I, I just don't the place I was, was covered in ants, um, so apologize for that uh, brief. Yeah, there was a lot of ants there. Okay, um, sorry about that. Um, so, okay, um, all right, sorry, a little flustered there, ants everywhere. Okay, all good. Uh, yeah, really sorry about that. So, um, yeah, everybody can still hear me and follow me. Um, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just making okay. sure. Okay. Okay. So we're talking about me about measurements. So we mentioned the case of how you can do it um, based on the. Uh, based. On the, um, oh, what's it called? Um, the angle uh, of the sun. On the, 
right between the angle of the sun and your and length of the shadows. So that might so that might have been how the how the tube works. But again, um, for the precision of getting it to that little 2000 ammo, um, so it's easier to do via starlight. I'm not during, during daylight. I'm not entirely sure how that how that method would have worked. Again, modern science is not quite sure how they'd have done it. Um, if somebody knows, or if I find out, I will let you know. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Okay, so now I'm about other how Rote says. So this is what a little tangentially and not, um, but okay. So how Rote says, it's related to shadows. So here we go. How Rote says, Lotus Shreff, Aya, Ra, Betzel, Kever. So if somebody wants to make sure that a wild beast will not rest in the shade of a grave, so what should he do? No, it's Kane, Barba, Shaot, Abayom, Nira, Hechan, Silo, Nota, Moshpia. So in order, in order to, um, right, so if you want to prevent the animals from resting there, see where the shade will be at four hours into the day, and then that way you can slant, um, and then you can slant your gravestone at the, at, at the right, at the right slope. That way there will be, there, there won't be shade at four hours into the day, and that way you will not have an issue of there being animals, um, uh, try to get into the grave, uh, and therefore you're, the person who is um, the person's body will remain at rest, and there's no issues of beasts either lying there or attempting to, um, you know, get at what's underneath the, 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 the tombstone. Okay. Nasemia braid rabbi tani lai So one time, from Nasemia was so gross as learning that he didn't. Um, the, that uh, he was so good as learning that he went outside the school. So, the Rukhissus then turned to Rav Nachman and said, he noticed that Nathamia uh, went, went outside the, shab- the, the tomb of Shabbat. How could he help him? So, Amr Lao, so he said, here's the solution. They say, every, get people who have, who have uh, sufficient tomb. To stand around him, making a human wall, and therefore he'd be allowed to he'd be allowed to re-enter re-enter the school. Yatu Rav Nachman, Bar Yitzchak Achore, the Rava, Yatu Rava Kame, the Rav Nachman. So then Rav Nachman sat sat Bar Yitzchak sat behind Rava, and Rava sat in the middle row of Bar Rav Nachman. So so Amar Le Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Bar Rava, my Kamei Le Rav Kista. Wait. So they were asking why precisely did what's the problem that we're just talking about that need, that that we need to, that for that not was related for Nathania. Like what's like you trying to figure out what, the, what exactly happened because you know I don't quite follow. So Elema de Malo Gabrieskin on if you're referring to the case where the where the whole film could be those people to come by like here that they're going to So what the one the one the question is asking. Um, so maybe you should argue that the that we're not, that we're talking the case of whether or not we follow a local like a Leal or not, in regards to if you happen to be in an enclosure, and then do you get the whole walls or not? And so here we say that people could form the walls just like if an Andrew came could form you form the walls for you. So to here could form the walls for you. So or in the local Leal, or we say that again, like we've talking about the case about the, the deer and the Sohar about the pen of the same, but the walls work. So here maybe it doesn't work. So in the case where people weren't, f- weren't fully filled, or weren't enough people to do so, um, and therefore you couldn't have made a wall around it to bring it back inside. Then the question was, is the fall like Rabbi Eliezer or not? The question of, can you um, enter from two Amorats and Samarats? Basically, so, um, so, We'll probably end up on this note. We'll continue on with the story about uh, Rabbi Eliezer's opinion, um, as well as the which one it was tomorrow. But let's just, let me try and give a full explanation of Rabbi Eliezer. This I'll put back my face back on because this is outside, not really going to tomorrow. Okay, so so a little bit. Of, so again, so we're going to do a little bit of review about how about about Shulman in general. And hopefully, this will make things make make sense again. Okay, so um, we have the case of. So in general, when we, we we started off we started off this parak. We were talking about cases of tfu, meaning when somebody place has a place of residence, then from that place of residence they get two thousand amos that they're allowed to, that they're allowed to walk by foot, uh, without but not they're not allowed to carry the items in the two thousand amos, but they're allowed to walk in that two thousand amos because that's their area that, that that they are that they are for Shabbat. 
um, or for Yom Tov. So then the, the question then became, um, what happens if you leave? So, uh, so we so we said if you that you had willingly left the tzum or it actually be removed from the tzum, you only get the Dalit Amo, the, the the six the four cubits around you, which amounts to being roughly two meters, and that's all that you're allowed. So the question is, so so then and now we're entering the opinion of Rebbe El Amelia. This was his opinion, and his opinion is that. When you have, when you happen to be outside of the tzum and you and you draw your dalit amot, so they they're drawn with you at the center of them. So what does that mean? That means that your that your dalit amot really means you get two amot in front, two amot all around you in a circle. So when that happens, that means that if you happen to be when you left the tzum, you notice right away you're within two amot, roughly one meter of the tzum, right? Let's say you walk, you you'd walk right past. You know, there's a there there. A lot of times they used to have school markers. Um, if you're any cities, we will know that, like, you know, this is the end of the city limits. Um, so, people would know if they're allowed to walk on Shabbat Yom Tov. So, when you cross that exact point, right, you re- then you finally realize, because let's say, you know, the, the ground changed, let's say it went from being in it, like, you know, like you don't, you walk past like a low fence or something, you're like, oh no. So, if you remembered within those first two Amo, According to the other, you're allowed to simply backtrack and go back inside because when you redraw your Dalin Amos, it includes it includes that as well, and therefore you would you'd be able to return. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's see. Okay, so we've got a minute and a half left, I think. And so, where are um, you? <laughs> where, oh, sorry. Where are you? Right. You know, so we no, mentioned Rebbe Ezra's opinion. We're no, right in the, where the last line, no, uh, no, where the first. Sorry, are you where you are? Do you know where you are? Oh, oh physically, I'm yes. on the, I'm on the corner of Searle and, I'm uh, and Willington, Wilmington. Okay. So, so okay. Yes, I know where I am. I just like I, I got turned around a bit because I was trying to take a scenic route, and then I, <laughs> um, yeah. So again, so just like the Gemara the, the talk about, talk, talking about how Nachedra was lost in his learning, so I was unfortunately <laughs> lost in the beautiful views of Toronto, and then I got then I got then I got a little bit lost. So luckily it's not it's not Shabbos Yom Tov, so I don't know about some, but I'll hopefully be able to find my way as soon as uh, when when I finish Shabbos Yom Not to worry, I got some fresh air. So thank God. Okay, so all right, so again, so um. Again, just again, just again, just quick, quick sum of, of what we covered. So we we started talking about issues of sum, um, right? Of the question of going a certain distance beyond the area, your area of residence on on Shabbos. We spoke about the case of if somebody's on a boat, do the walls of the boat count as being walls or not? We spoke about the case if you're in a valley, do the walls of the valley count or not? We spoke about the case if you're in a boat, um, or if you're um, it's in, in a location that's raised above the ground, above Tzem Fathim. Does that, does that mean, does, does Tzem still apply above Tzem Fathim? With a resolution in regards to both, we said, it's like one of the cases where, where there'd be a Mafloket is, with, is, is that um, it must be where you're below Tzem Fathim. That's why everyone agrees that's problematic, because if you're, if, you're, if you're in very low, shallow waters, then you're actually close up to Tzem Fathim. Um, but, again, but, but similarly, when you're remote Tzem Fathim, it appears that majority opinion as being that actually you don't have to worry about Tzem, which, which would mean that if you happen to be on a boat on and also we, we see, and also we we, we pass like we're going to on a boat, which means that if somebody is on a boat again, whether or not you're allowed to be on a boat or not on Chavez is a much larger discussion um, for that. And as well as when you board it, again, people are interested in this year on that topic um, on on going cruises on Shabbat. Please let me know, and I'm happy to present present that topic. Um, I'll mention it in brief as we cover here. But as far as that also goes, you want more in depth um, uh, explanation as well as also the uh, part of Shabbos, not just in Erevin. Please let me know. And so and then, lastly, the last topic that we were we, that we, we were we were dealing with is um, in regards to if you somebody said how to set up the walls artificially, or and can you set up walls made of people in order to solve issues of swimming? And I hope everybody has a e- an easy and meaningful fast today. And I will hopefully see everybody tomorrow. Shukriya on the show for blowing as well, by the way, yesterday. Shukriya. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right.